Computers have evolved massively over the past 30 years. The Sinclair ZX Spectrum made computing affordable to the masses in the early 1980s. Then we had the BBC Micro, which was a hit in education. The Apple Macintosh was the first computer ever to feature a graphical user interface, something that we take completely for granted today. In the early 1990s, the IBM ThinkPad 701C took design to a whole new level with a fold-out keyboard that looked like something from a sci-fi movie. In the late 1990s, the desktop computer brought computing and the internet into the home, and then in the 2000s, the laptop and Wi-Fi brought it out of the home again. And today, today we use any device anywhere with anybody. We have a huge range of devices that we like to work on, and we can work with anybody on the planet using these devices. Just have a think about that for a moment. How powerful is that? So there's absolutely no doubt that computers have transformed the office and our homes, and the way that we work and how information is delivered to us. But what about schools? Are we utilizing this technology in schools? Well, the simple answer is not really. OK, sure, we have IT lessons in school now, which are mandatory that kids have to attend. But the fact is, is that most kids are already being taught how to do things that they already know in these lessons. So why hasn't technology really evolved in the school? Why haven't schools really been thinking about how we can use technology to make education better? One reason could be the sheer expense. The fact is, is that it cost over a million pounds to provide every student and teacher in a school with 2,000 students and 300 teachers with a 500 pound tablet each. That's Apple iPad money. And think about the damage liabilities of this. Who's responsible if something gets broken? It just turns into a huge administration nightmare. The second problem is the distractions. It's often believed that children who get bored in lessons, they like to drift away and text on their phone, if I can get mine out, text on their phone underneath the desk a bit. And even if their phone is as brightly colored as mine, sometimes it can be a little bit hard to spot them. But regardless, it distracts them from the education, and it takes away valuable and important lesson time. But get this, here are some facts why we should be using technology in school. All of the facts on the screen behind me are very important, but it's the bottom one that I want you to focus on the most. 51% of households in the UK with a child aged between three and 15 years old owned a tablet in 2016, compared to just 7% in 2011. I'll let you take that in for a minute, but it gets better than that. In four years, because that statistic was published last year, we've gone from under 10% to over 50% of households in the UK with children aged between three and 15 years old living in them owning a tablet computer. What's it going to be like in 2020 in another four years' time? It's probably going to be closer to 100%. The fact is, is that you simply cannot escape the fact that technology is in everybody's pockets in 2016. And if it's not in your pocket, then it's certainly in your home somewhere. Do you own a fridge? Do you own a microwave? Do you own an electric oven? Name any household appliance you like, and it's got a microprocessor inside it. Technology is everywhere. How many of you planned your presentation today using technology? You all had to, because you all had to email the presentation files over to the event organizers. Over the past few days, we've been using Yammer to communicate and collaborate on this TEDx event, which is a social media platform. How many of you here have been using social media today? My phone has been buzzing all day because of all of the Twitter feeds, and I've been reading over the past few days about all the hype with this event and people saying that they're looking forward to hearing me speak, and I hope I'm not disappointing so far, but you're all there, you're all using the technology. If you're a teacher, how many of you have been using technologies to plan your lessons? I bet most of you have, but what's more importantly is how many of you have actually considered letting your students use the technology in class? I bet it's significantly fewer of you. So it's cliche as hell, but I'm going to say it anyway. Technology means that students of today have access to information that students of the past simply did not have. We've all heard it 100,000 times, and the fact is, is that it's true. So why don't we utilize this? Why don't we start connecting with people all around the world to inspire our students and to educate them? The fact is, is that 30 years ago, 
Students could only gain information by asking local people or maybe reading books. Today, we have the likes of Wikipedia and the other billions of web pages on the internet to gather information and educate ourselves. But it gets better than this. We can actually talk to people all across the world using video conferencing tools in the classroom, such as Skype and Google Hangouts and FaceTime and a number of other things that are available today. It doesn't matter what subject you teach, maths, English, geography, ICT, RE, PE, does not matter. There are people out there whose passion is your subject, and they want to make your students feel enriched and engaged in their subject. You can talk to true professionals who really can give your students an extra insight and make your students feel really empowered and interested in the lesson and very engaged because they'll be talking to an industry expert. And that's also really great for the teachers as well to get a different perspective on their topics. Let's take geography as an example. It's one of the three subjects I study at A-level at the moment. I absolutely love it. Why do I love geography? It's because it's a subject where you need to feel like you're there. You need to see pictures. You need to see videos. You need to hear what people have to say about current affairs. And what better way to do that than actually talk to people who are experiencing it here and now? Teachers and students, I'm sure you're aware that copying out of the textbook is flat. It's boring. And if your textbook, like mine, was written a number of years ago, the world has done so many revolutions since your book was written that the information in it is outdated. You might find it hard or expensive or time-consuming to fly somebody over from Bangladesh to talk about flooding for an hour in your geography lesson. But the fact is, is that there's more than likely people out there on Skype or using the internet who will happily talk to your students about some of these matters. Students can talk to people, they can hear current information and knowledge, and that will be a fantastic learning experience for them. And it will make them feel really, really engaged. Because it's something a little bit different. We don't do it at the moment, and this is all about making a change, making a positive change at that as well. But that's quite a big step, thinking on an international scale. Let's think on a smaller scale for a minute. Sometimes the biggest changes come from the smallest steps. I've seen physics teachers use simple online games in their lessons to help explain complicated physics theories which students simply could not grasp. But when the students were playing a game and controlling the variables themselves and thinking, if I change this, what's the consequence of that? They were able to understand the physics theories and therefore succeed. So small steps can lead to a big difference. Another horrible cliche, which you probably all heard before, is that technology saves the trees. And it's true. Think about it this way. We don't like to use our natural resources to power our homes, to power our hospitals, to, to cook our food, to keep us warm and keep us dry. Yet, think about this. The United States has less than 5% of the world's population, but consumes over 30% of its paper. Perhaps if we encouraged a bring your own device policy in classes where students could use their own tablets or laptops, we could make the world a better place still. So really, what I want you to get from my short talk today, which has only been 10 minutes, is that actually technology has no bounds. Use it as much as you like in class. Be as creative with it as possible. Utilize it to its full potential. But most importantly, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to use it. If you use technology in the classroom, your kids will feel more engaged and they'll be more interested because they've been held back for using it for so long that just the slightest change will make them want to do your lesson. They'll come home that night and tell their parents that they've had a fantastic lesson delivered only because their teacher has enabled them to use the technology in their class. The education system in the UK, at least, has stayed the same for hundreds of years, but more importantly, the world around it and the students benefiting from it have changed completely. We really need to be more embracing, more forward thinking, and more creative with how we use technology in the classroom. Thank you very much.